Hey friends, my name is Aaron Scarborough and uh, I'm going to teach acrylic painting, uh, starting out with this lovely grapefruit still life today. Um, you do you want me to hold up the thing? Yeah, okay. Beautiful. This is what it looks like. Oh. Uh, I brought it in today and people have already called it everything but a grapefruit. <laughs> they called it um, an avocado earlier? Yes, yes. Just, yeah, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is my first time doing this and uh, you know I I gotta admit I'm a little bit nervous uh, so if you'll just bear with me uh, we'll, we'll get through this together or we won't um, <laughs> alright so <clears throat> time will tell um, the colors that I'm using uh, first of all we have primary yellow it's gonna be essential um, okay <laughs> this is yeah <clears throat> It's gonna be a lot of downtime. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Well, listen, it was during the downtime. Can I <laughs> We have uh, Piroli, which the the jury's still out on how to pronounce that. Um, Pyrol, Pyrol, <laughs> Piroli <laughs> red. Yeah. Um, we have ultramarine blue. and titanium white. So these are, uh, these are this, this palette was chosen because it is just a set of primaries. You can get to everything that we're gonna need to paint this uh, by mixing colors. Um, and on that note, I'm gonna say this again. Uh, it is good to learn how to paint with only using primary colors in white. Um, Number one, because it teaches you how to mix colors uh, and you learn just about color theory in general by default, just by doing it. Uh, and then also there are aesthetic reasons why you don't want to paint with black out of the tube or brown out of the tube um, uh, right out the gate. And we're gonna learn how to like mix those darks uh, throughout this process. Sweet. So, yeah. Um, so this is, uh, these are the colors we're gonna use. Uh, the next step uh, to get started really uh, is just gonna be drawing out uh, on our little sheet of paper what we're gonna do. Um, and it's, I've, this is a really good one to start with because it's super simple. Um, so first things first, uh, the way I would start this is just divide the canvas, or the you know, the paper. The paper. Um, divide the, can the, <laughs> the paper uh, in basically like thirds. You're just going to eyeball it. Aaron, um, you want to bring your reference photo to the middle? Yes. Do you want to actually go over the steps real quick? Yeah, do you want me to? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, step one with this is going to be we're just going to draw out uh, just a quick line drawing of, of everything that we're going to do here. Um, and we're not going to get too, uh, too worried about it because the, the cool thing about acrylics is that it's super forgiving. So you can paint over whatever you, uh, you did wrong. And nice. if you're like me, you do a lot wrong. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we're going to, uh, draw, draw this still life. And then we're going to go to the underpainting, which by that, I mean, we're going to use a thin layer of paint to get a general, uh, you know, color scheme or whatever you want to say. Like we're going to get the whole paper covered um, with a thin layer of paint before we start doing detail. And what was um, the term you used for that? An underpainting. Underpainting. Yes. Okay, cool. And sometimes even, you know, this is interesting because like sometimes painters, even if they're painting with oil, will use acrylic to make an underpainting. Really? Yes. Because when you're, you're painting with oil even, uh, you actually uh, are painting on white acrylic paint normally uh, called gesso that you put all over the canvas. So, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, we can, we can talk about that later. Um, the next step after we have the basic underpainting, um, we're just going to do the shadows, uh, to give our grapefruit more form. Um, and then we're going to get into the details and put like the finer, uh, the final layers of paint on there, including the highlights and the, the super darks and all that. 
uh, and hopefully it'll look something like this. Nice. So, um, okay. Okay. So let's uh, let's put that back there, there right? We go. That works. Okay. So um, I think the easiest way to get this done uh, and just get started is to, um, and we're not going to measure this out because that kind of takes the fun out of the whole thing. Um, but we're just going to make a line that is approximately like a third of the way down the page. So we'll just do like a, a line. Don't worry about the quality of your line or if you have a, a bad pencil. Um, because <laughs> because you're just going to paint over it anyway. Um, that's kind of the cool thing about acrylic. It's just like, I, I wish life was more like acrylic where your your mistakes don't matter, but they like do. Like Groundhog Day? Yeah, that would, <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, so uh, we have the edge of the counter. And if you can't tell, like this is supposed to be like a countertop and then it's kind of ambiguous back here. I think of it as a wall mm -hmm. um, with that darker value up there. But uh, the first thing, like the easiest way I think to, to think about this grapefruit is to just um, draw it as an oval that's kind of pointing towards the right side of your page. So you'll just kind of do that. And I, I usually make a couple passes when I'm doing something like this so that I can get it exactly where I want it, just kind of a general. And the nice thing about acrylic is that these pencil marks will go away too, right? They are going away, and it's a good thing too, because look at them, you know? <laughs> They're not pretty. Okay, so that grapefruit is a good one to start with. Um, we'll worry about like the, the details in there in a moment. Um, and then this, the, the slice on the right, it, uh, if you look at it closely, it's, it's also kind of angled up like that. Um, but this one's going to be a lot more skinny mm. because of where it's at on the page and in, in relation to that. Um, so this, this grapefruit is kind of angled towards us a little bit, whereas that one, um, we're just kind of seeing the top of it in perspective. So, just kind of draw that. This is part of my favorite, this pro part of the process is my favorite to watch because I love the sketching look. Oh any, yeah? Yeah, I love the sketch look of any painting. Well, I'm a big fan, Aaron. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm a big fan. Dude, you could do this, you know. No. This is This isn't exactly groundbreaking work. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, you know, this is but you know, people like build their whole career on painting fruit and stuff cuz yeah. you know, once you've mastered one way of doing it, you have other ideas and I by the way, right now I'm just kind of putting some some lines to to uh, reference later when I'm actually painting the detail of this. Gotcha. Um, so just kind of dividing up the, you know, what, do, what would you call that? Just like the, the face of the grapefruit? I would call it whatever you would call it. Right. So yes, it's the, the face. face. Um, and then the sections that are visible. Right. The Which fruit. Is, exactly. Okay, so uh, I noticed while I was doing this that I was uh, like, I want the grapefruit to be a little bit bigger and okay. take up more of the page. So uh, I'm not gonna freak out, you know, cause what good's that gonna do? Right. Um, so I'm just gonna make this oval a little bit bigger and take up more of the page. That's a lot bigger. Um, just gonna redefine it a little bit. Nice. And that's going to change, of course, where the center is. So I'll do that. And then since I'm a little bit more confident in the lines that I'm making now, I'm going to make them darker. <sighs> yeah. 
and drawing people, people who are into drawing, which I'm not, uh, <laughs> they would have a fit, <laughs> a fit about what I'm doing. Um, but I see everything is, I'm going to paint over it later. I, I must just be uneducated when it comes to drawing because I, like I said, this is my favorite process of watching the art come alive like this. Right. This is my favorite pro part. Well, do you, Keenan, do you draw? I have a, a journal that is, uh, it was a gift for Christmas that I was supposed to fill out by August and I have not yet. So, no. <laughs> I doodle a lot. You doodle? Yeah, yeah, I have an entire page here that I've doodled on over right. the past few weeks. But I don't necessarily sit down and draw. <clears throat> well, you could start the sister company, Let's Doodle. <laughs> Let's Doodle. Let's Doodle with Kanan. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty fun. Um, I, I love doodling as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is bigger. This takes up more of the page, uh, and I'm happy with it f as of right now. I'm going to go ahead and make the lines where I want the shadows to start. If you look at a reference photo, we got little shadows here conveniently placed to show what, uh, you know, give it more to depth. give it, yeah, give it depth. Thank you. Um, and just kind of define the fruit. Cause, and people paint in different ways, you know, as far as like how harsh the edges are and stuff. I, you know, I like clarity in my paintings. I like harsh edges hmm. and stuff, but that's not the only way to do it. Some people, you can't find an edge in their whole painting, you know? Interesting. So would that be just because if you can't find an edge, is that, why would that be? So, uh, it, it, it's basically like process wise, they get really good at creating just so much softness. Like, um, instead of like where I, in this painting, I'm gonna like take a thick glob of paint and, you know, make sure that it's, it's a stark contrast with, with uh, like between this white part in this, you know, the orange part, the yeah. outside, um, they just, they're more subtle uh, and they soften the edges. You know, there's no clear line gotcha. between that white and. That makes sense, okay. That was like, you know, like baro in Baroque terms, uh, a little art history, like there was this mysterious painter named Vermeer and that's what people are intrigued by most about his paintings is when they look at it, they're masterfully painted and very clear when you like, when you're looking at them, you can tell exactly uh, what they're supposed to be. Um, but if you get up close, you can't find the edges between things, you know, because he, he just, he had a magical ability to make everything so soft that you, if you look up close, you like, you can't see it. Um, and then that was kind of extended with with uh, with the impressionists, and they they didn't believe in you know having harsh lines anywhere either. It was all about soft brush strokes and stuff. Um, Thank you for the history lesson. You know I can pontificate about this stuff for days. That was also an excellent word. I know that word because of my grandpa who mm. likes to pontificate. <laughs> <laughs> That's. That's why I know pontificate, and it's, it does sound like a big word, so I try to use it as much as possible. It mysteriously shows up in a lot of conversations <laughs> that it doesn't belong in. It's one of like three big words that I know though. All right. <clears throat> so, um, I'm happy with this drawing. Are you, are you happy with this underdrawing, King? I, I love this underdrawing. Okay. Um, so, if we look at our step sheet, it's time for the step two, the underpainting process. Uh, and now's when you guys get to see how sloppy I really am. Oh, um, so, as of right now, and for the, the next few minutes, uh, we're not probably not even gonna use the, 
the little brush until the end, which by the way, I don't know if we went over this or if this What's is- it, What uh, brushes so, are you using? So we're gonna do this whole thing using a three quarter inch flat brush, which is a lot more versatile than it looks. And I like, I, I sometimes will make a whole painting with just using this brush. I love it. Wow. Um, so we're gonna use this because it's gonna take a lot less time than this. And we're gonna go over like different, uh, different uses that you can get out of a flat brush. And then when we get to the detailing, uh, we're gonna start using this little liner. And this is the number two liner by Princeton. Um, I think that's the, so is that the Select Artiste? The Select Artiste? I believe, if it's the blue handle. It is, yes, it's the Select. Yep, okay. Yes, and it's got some fancy. Yep. Yeah, okay. Sorry. No, you're fine. I, you geek out about this stuff. Don't <laughs> I get you? a little excited. You I, get... <laughs> I've ordered all these things, so. <laughs> right. Um, all right. <laughs> so uh, I think a good thing to start with, a good uh, next step, is just getting a good like basic orange. We're going to mix an orange with the, the, the yellow and the, the red. Um, and we're just going to make like, we're just going to get a basic shape, a basic layer of paint going for the outside of the grapefruit. Um, and I'm gonna do that by using mainly yellow. I'm just gonna get like a little dab of the red. I'm just gonna mix that together and then I'm gonna keep adding yellow until I get to a tint that I like. Would you shift that a little to your right? Yes. Perfect, thank you, that's perfect. It was just a little out. Okay. That looks great. So one thing you'll notice, we're gonna, we're gonna use like pretty watery layers to start off. Um, so they're gonna be real see-through, um, but you're also gonna be able to see some cool like brush strokes with this. So we're just gonna, and by the way, this is, this is not the only way to paint, obviously. There's a bunch of different ways to go about it. Um, I'm gonna do my best to tell you why I think I prefer doing it. But my method changes over time as well. But I like to do a thin underpainting with acrylic because you paint one part and that informs how, you, just having the general idea of what that color is gonna be like will inform uh, how I paint the the foreground and the background. And there's there's just tiny little uh, decisions that are, are based on what's already on the camp or on the, the paper. I'm gonna keep saying that. I like painting on canvas and paper. Do you paint primarily on canvas? I do. Um, I do, but for this type of thing, honestly, paper is a good the paper's nice because it, it allows you to be carefree. Yeah. Like when I have a canvas, I stretch it and I gesso it myself. So when I get to the point where I'm ready to, to paint, I, I wanna have like a good project that I know is gonna pay off. Interesting. Whereas paper is a good place for exploration and learning, you know? Cool. Um, that's not to say like some of the best works I've ever done have been on paper and you can, if you frame it nicely, who's to say it's even on paper? You, right. can't even, you can't even tell. And there have been some great works of art done on paper. I can't name any, but. <laughs> <laughs> but they're out there. Yeah, they are. I think. <sighs> okay, so we got that. Um, <clears throat> next step, I'm gonna go ahead and do you care if I bring this closer? No, that? absolutely. Okay. You, you stay it's, comfortable. We're gonna, and I guarantee that I will mess this up, but, and get, get these reversed. But in, in general, it's good to have one for rinsing and one, uh, one cup for water to use as your medium. I was and, gonna say, because you're taller than the other artists, right. they can't actually see the table. Okay. And that's out of the frame, but you said cup of water, so. Yes, yeah, so if you can't see, I have, I have a mason jar 
uh, with dirty water, <laughs> and then I have a cup with water that's about to be dirty. So, um, <laughs> all right, and then I just did, okay. Happens every time. Yes. Or sometimes. All right, so now that it's fairly clean, and it doesn't have to be that clean, because honestly, we're gonna go right back into the yellow. We just kinda wanna get most of the red pigment out of there. And but, for, for acrylic, I know for watercolor, we don't want our water to be dripping off the brush. It depends, you know? Like, uh, I, I use that uh, sometimes, like, sometimes if you've got a really watery layer going, it's gonna be dripping off the brush. Gotcha. And there are times where the, a painting calls for just a super thin layer. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, watercolor is a different world. I, yeah, man, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I like it, but I don't get it. So, all right. So, next thing, um, the table, and I, when I was making this original, which I did this morning, oh, uh, nice. I, <laughs> so I, uh, I made the the table. It wound up looking pretty white, but there are a bunch of layers of color on here, and they can you can kind of see it in this reproduction. Um, so who knows what it's going to look like when we're done? But ideally, it'd be something like this because I like it. It's not just a plain white table that has nothing going on. There's there's some treats in there, you know. Um, but uh, it is going to be primarily white, and since since the fruit is actually all warm colors uh, for the most part, I want, I want the table to be a cool white. So I'm gonna use mainly blues and, and uh, greens. So let's, let's go ahead and get some green going over here. Just grab a little blue, something like that. And now I'm gonna get a little water and then I'm gonna go to the white Grab some of that. We're gonna go ahead and paint the table. And I'm actually, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and paint the table even though I know later on it's gonna be a shadow and it's not gonna be that color. So, and don't get too, you know, uh, don't, don't care too much at this point. This is just an underpainting. It's gonna change. Nice. Jesse would say, don't be too precious. Don't be too precious? I love that. <laughs> so, just got a general, and I'm going, it's important, if you don't wanna ruin whatever surface you're working on, it's important to put something down. Sarah thought ahead. Yeah, that was smart. I would have, I would have ruined this mat so hard. <laughs> um, That's all right. That's I'm glad she thought of it too because right. I just assumed that mat can be replaced. Right. Oh. Anything can be. Most things. Most things <laughs> can be replaced. Uh, and you know, it's not the end of the world if you get a little acrylic on your clothes or something because it is water soluble oh that's nice i didn't you realize know. that yeah i mean that makes sense because you can mix it but yeah whereas like with oil paint um which i use a lot of you everything that you're using water for you use minerals mineral spirits and uh you use mineral spirits and like linseed oil or oh. or just some other medium um, to break down the paint water it out you know that's really the only that's the key difference and it takes forever to dry does it oil does yeah whereas this acrylics nice man because it's just like it's already drying as soon as it's on there Is that another reason you do so many layers? 
thinner layers make it easier for, and quicker for it to dry? Yeah. Um, honestly, I like doing a bunch of thin layers because you get like these fun little varieties. It's not all the same, yeah. you know? And okay. and depending on how watery you make it, 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 it becomes a lot more translucent. Is that the right word? Sure. Uh, you can see through it more. So you, by the time you're done, you've got all this fun stuff happening. Um, just on accident, you know? It's nice. Did nice. I move that out of the frame? Nope, you're good. Just a little under that page, you're good. Okay, sweet. So, um, now the, the background, the way I did this background, I went ahead and put like a pretty thick layer on my underpainting of just blue, just straight up blue out the tube. Um, and then, you know, I, I messed with it and did thin layers over that, but I, I like the way that looks because blue, you know, just primary blue, or in this case, ultramarine blue, is going to, having this in the background is just going to make these yellows and oranges and everything up front pop. Um, and the blue is just going to recede into the background. So even though this is going to be a dark green, uh, I want little little sections of blue just kind of peeking out. Nice. You know? Yeah. Um, we love pops of color. Yeah. So. I'm going to get it on the source photo. Hang on. Oh. We're not going to worry about brush strokes or anything yet. You get to procrastinate. Nice. It's nice. I like that. Yeah. I'm good at that. Same. <sighs> Let's... How long have you been painting? So, I mean, I might have done some paintings in high school, which was, believe it or not, 10 years ago. I. Uh, 11 years, 11 years, that's, Dang. yeah, I, um, and I, to be honest, I'm self-conscious about how old I look. How old you, you know, look? I don't, I know this isn't where you wanted this discussion to go. <laughs> this is not but the it's, direction it's I thought it something on my mind. Uh, so I'm 29. Same. Are you? Yep. See, you have aged with grace, Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> and well, thank that's you. good. I have not. But you look good. <sighs> well, I appreciate you saying that. Aaron, I'm, I'm your cheerleader. I'm telling you, you look great. <laughs> it's not... I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, I, by the way, that's not why I started this conversation. <laughs> because I knew it, 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 it would end up there. I'm glad it did. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't even know. How did this start? Th this started. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I asked it, how long you've been painting. Yeah, and I like the idea that that all my artwork, like if you look into it enough, is a metaphor for my insecurities. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so on the surface, this is about a fruit, but <laughs> yeah. if you delve into it and spend some time with it, you'll realize it's about my receding hairline. <laughs> you know? Oh. Well, now I'll probably never look at a pomegranate the same. Well, <laughs> wait till you see my avocado that's about my dad not playing catch with me. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. He played catch sometimes. All right. <clears throat> so... We're getting close to the end of the underpainting. Um, let's go ahead and paint the, the inside of the grapefruit. Wait, why am I already getting that out? I don't even need that. You're getting um, excited. I am getting excited. <sighs> All right, so I'm just gonna put like, just like I did with the blue, I'm just gonna put like some, some just straight up red out the tube uh, to, to do the inside of this grapefruit. Um, because I think it's going to look nice whenever we layer over it just to have those just red, bright red, pure 
red shining through. So. I appreciate how many times you said red. <laughs> That's a telltale sign that I'm like stalling. <laughs> you just start to say the, the yeah. word red. I know when I'm done saying red that I'll have to say something with substance. So I. <laughs> All right. So. So I'm sure you'll tell us, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually really curious to know, as you get thicker and or more layers, mm -hmm. the pencil lines are harder to see. They are. Are you going to, is there a way that you mark it throughout as you start to lose the pencil lines or do you just? That's a good question. Um, so, I guess that's something that I don't think about often, but um, now that you mention it, I think that you, as you continue to paint more and more things, you, you learn to use your marks as you're making the painting while there's still pencil marks, um, just as a reference. And then you just, you get a good sense for remembering where things were. Okay. It's probably a subconscious type of thing. Sure. Um, but, it also helps that we're painting something super simple right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's another thing. F fruit, man, th it's so good to paint because, you know, if I spent the same amount of time drawing a face like this, something that we have an eye for and can be quite disturbing if you do it wrong, uh, <laughs> like if I spent that amount of time drawing a face as I did, and, and effort as I did drawing this grapefruit, it would, it would be so, it would be disturbing. <laughs> um, so whereas much. fruit's more forgiving. Fruit yeah. can have ab ab abnormalities without uh, looking crazy. And, um, you know, fruit doesn't get offended whenever you paint it too big. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big thing. I love doing portraits, but man, you gotta, you gotta be careful. <laughs> <laughs> People don't like you taking liberties <laughs> with anything about them. <laughs> but grapefruits can't complain. <laughs> you know. Totally. <sighs> All right. <laughs> okay, so. We have the, the underpainting basically done. Like, of course, like the whole thing is not totally covered because I haven't put the white down here, but I think it'll be helpful to put the, the shadows down next. We're just gonna move on to the next step. Nice. Um, so another thing uh, th that's cool about this sort of, of still life is um, who's to say what color the shadow uh, really is coming off of this thing? So you can have fun with uh, you know, preferably, it, it, or ideally, it's going to be like a cool color, like a purple, um, uh, you know, or, or, or a blue of some kind. But um, for this to translate as a shadow, really, the only thing is it needs to be a darker shade than what the table is. So, um, does that make sense? Yeah, My, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and. Part of the reason why I chose this palette is it's super easy to mix just a dark value uh, with these two. Ultramarine is already dark. You put a little bit of this red in there and you've got, you've got this like kind of violet shade. And depending on how dark you want it to be, you add more blue. Um, but let's just, you know, that's pretty purpley here. Yeah. Let's just see how it looks on the actual painting when, when it hits the paper on that green. Okay, I made that way too watery. <sighs> so there is a point where it can be too watery. Yes. <laughs> I'm changing my answer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, there's, there's a ton of water on there. And the more water you put in this, the more it's going to warp the paper, oh, which is not wow. a huge thing. Not a big deal, but um, you know, let's, let's just get it down and see what it looks like. <laughs> 
yeah. though, you know? That's why I can't do watercolor, man. Like, it's hard for me because... I am <sighs> not great at it, but I enjoy what it does on its own. It's a cool thing. It is. It's like, because of that, like, final permanence uh, and the fact that you, if you want a white, you got to save the paper, like... It's almost like an athletic endeavor to <laughs> to do a watercolor. Whereas, you know, I go into a painting like Mr. Magoo, Mr. you Magoo. know, uh, and I'm just throwing paint everywhere and I keep procrastinating till the end. And I'll, like, I'll fix it later. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's a pretty red looking shadow, man. Um, let's, I think I want more blue in there. Um, yeah. I think you were, you mentioned earlier though that who's to say what color the shadow is actually going to be? Yeah. And I thought that was a really interesting concept because your table top is going to be a different color. Mm -hmm. Your light source may be a different color. Your fruit may be reflecting a different color. Sure. And all those colors combined may not be what you would expect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you, I mean, that's another thing like, like I said, people build careers on painting fruit and stuff like that. And they've, um, one of my favorite painters, which is a good guy to look up, he's still alive actually. He was, uh, you know, painting in the, the 70s and 60s, but um, his name's Wayne Tebow. And his shadows, man, they just, you should look him up. Um, no matter what he's painting, the shadows are just really what gets you. But he, he would paint, just cakes and cookies and stuff like that and that sounds like <sighs> something I would enjoy eating <laughs> yeah so I, I could understand why someone would want to paint food all the time right well when he was doing that stuff like the stuff he was painting and the way he was painting it like people were like what you know what what are you doing here uh, and now you know his paintings go for millions Wow. Um, but yeah, apparently back in the day they were shocking. All right, so I'm starting to define a little bit. I, I just want to make sure there's a little bit of a shadow, a dark shadow being cast on the, the right half of the grapefruit um, over here. It's kind of like that in the original. Um, and then over here, and I'm using the same paint that I used for the table shadow, but I just want to get a general idea of where those shadows are going to lie, knowing well that I'm going to I'm going to come back and change the color of that for sure. But uh, yeah, how are we doing on time, man? How how long have I been going? Thirty-one minutes. Thirty-one. So we're at about 45 total. With, oh, with, okay. With okay. editing, with editing though, you'll probably with the beginnings and the colors, mm -hmm. probably down to. We're probably down to 36. 36 okay. Minutes total. And so ideally, great. what are we shooting for? So the longest one we've ever done was an hour and a half. Okay. Um, we've shortened them significantly since then. But this process, we're a bit chatty today, so yeah. like this process will get easier and smoother. It'd be great. Okay. Man, you are, you're good at what you do. <laughs> Thank you. I was an awkward mess when I walked in here. That's okay. And Keenan showed me the light. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go back in here with even darker for these shadows. Because they're gonna, we're gonna have to do that eventually anyway. Um, contrast is a thing I'm big on, probably because of like when I was learning how to do this stuff, the instructors I had were big on contrast. Everything you do needs contrast, which that just means that there's a lot of really, there's a lot of range between the darks and the lights okay. uh, and a lot of middle. Well, there's a lot of variation. Not every, it's not all just one big mid-tone. Um, 
which helps with depth, I assume. Oh, for sure. Okay. For sure. And just as a whole, you know, like good images, traditionally good images that are striking are high contrast. So, all right. Let's, uh, let's do this now. Let's start dividing up the grapefruit. So um, to do that, there's kind of, if you look at a grapefruit, like the insides, and this is a very simplified version. There are tiny little squiggles and it's a, there's a world with, within this grapefruit. Um, but to simplify it, uh, there is that, like the outer edge where you cut the grapefruit, there, on that very outer edge, it's going to be like white. That's like the whitest part. And we're going to make that actually pure white uh, by the time we're done with it. But then there's an inner ring right before that that's kind of tan. Uh, I used a tan. Um, so just like a little bit of red. And like we'll just use the orange that we had. Um, maybe make a little bit more of it. And then we're going to grab some white. Okay, so that's a little bit too pink for my taste on this. You see, we're getting kind of a tan mm -hmm. going. That's good. It's almost kind of a skin tone. Um, <clears throat> so, and we're still going to use the flat brush. And this is where, like, it's actually much quicker to make these lines that we're gonna make with this flat brush, especially if it's a newer flat brush and it hasn't got all you know, beat up yet. Yeah. Um, Cause you can just kinda, you know. Well, that was nice. Yeah, you just kinda make these lines. Just dividing up the grapefruit. <sighs> All right, so and you see how, like, you know, be, this flat brush. It's good for making these big, thick strokes and covering the canvas quickly or the paper quickly. But it's also, you, you know, you can, you can do stuff. You could theoretically make this whole painting with the flat brush. Yeah. You know? Would you be willing to push your painting a little up and yeah. to the left? Sure. Perfect. Okay. So, make sure we get this outer ring. In, you know, in theory, these lines, because of how we're looking at the grapefruit, these lines would be real close together. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because of the angle of the fruit. Right. I'm actually... Do you see how I did that? I did. That was <laughs> nice. Measured. I got moves, man. Oh, okay. So, got these weak lines on there just to kind of, like how we were talking about earlier, you know, because the, the drawing's starting to get covered up. Right. It's just going to kind of give me a reference. Okay, cool. Um, okay. So, I think a good next move, uh, wait for this stuff to get totally dry. Um, why don't we put another layer on the countertop? Yeah, we should do that. I'm, I'm 
I'm glad you're including yeah. me in this uh, project. <laughs> this is your grapefruit as well. Okay. So uh, I think we could use a little bit more. Let's let's make this layer a little bit more blue, and we're also going to make it more. Uh, th we're going to make it thicker. So um, not as much water in there. We're going to do thick globs of paint, thicker, not the thickest. Look at all these mistakes I'm making along the way. Whew. It's okay. We're big fans of procrastination. Yes. You can fix that later. <laughs> this is Procrastination Station <laughs> with Aaron and Keen. Pro procrastination Station. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> this is super blue. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank Almost you. Almost actually makes me think of a concrete color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Less gray, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Dude, I've I've been trying to paint wood grain lately because that's that's a huge thing. You see a lot of wood grain in the types of paintings that I like, and and uh, I've just always avoided it because it's like it's a tedious endeavor. Yeah. Man, if you can pull it off though, it looks real cool it's like if you're watching this and you want to because this is ambiguous like you can you can do what you want at the end of the day with with this countertop and it could maybe it's wood you know if i had more time maybe i'd try to make it wood that'd be cool it ain't easy though i was trying to it's funny you say that because i was trying to pencil art some uh, wood design mm -hmm. and it is not easy but it is very satisfying if you can get at least one spot right and there I mean there's different types of of wood grain oh yeah of course and you know if it if it works it's great I've made a few that don't work though. And it's like, man, phew, this is at my mom's house. It wouldn't even make the fridge. <laughs> uh, all right. So, all right. So let's put another layer on the, while we're at it, you know, let's put another layer on the background. So let's clean the brush a little bit. Um, we still got enough blue and yellow to make this happen. I'm gonna use a lot of blue still. So, yeah. Now we're talking. <clears throat> Let me know if this goes out of frame again. Nope. It you're good. I just wanted to make sure we were getting the uh, the lines you were painting on the fruit earlier. Oh, right. With the side cam. Ah, very important. Yes. All right. Oh, man. <clears throat> so are you still not really concerned with your... Um, brush strokes at this point? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, uh, on some level, I probably, because I paint frequently, mm -hmm. you know, like there's probably something in the back of my mind making me paint these a certain way. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I'd encourage you to embrace whatever is natural for you. Um, some people have big brush strokes and some have little brush strokes. Some people, you can't see the brush strokes at all by the time they're done. Really? Yeah. That's a thing. Is that just because of how many, like the layers, they overlap? Over they're just time? very cautious, yeah. They, um, and they paint differently, you know? Wow. Not as, kind of goes back to the edges uh, yeah. earlier uh, that we were talking about. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and people... People paint differently, like some people might do this, like they, they would get the grapefruit exactly right. And that's, that's the whole point. They, they just work their way out. 
Whereas I, I like to work general to specific, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so finish with details? Finish with the details, get, you know, and you know, after you've made a whole basic like underpainting or, or just you've done the whole thing with this big brush, I also like the feeling of you pulling the little brush out, you know, after making myself use this thing the whole time. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's a real treat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Still very general. We're still procrastinating. All right. So. <sighs> All right. So we, we did another layer on the background. Let's go back into the fruit. Uh, we haven't touched this since the very beginning. I just yeah. touched it and got some green on it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's let's get closer to the final color of the outside of the grapefruit. Grapefruits are more fun to paint than eat. Oh, let's I agree. be honest. I agree with that a hundred percent. And I have never painted a grapefruit. Yeah. So I and I still agree. Um, I used to like them more than I do now. Hmm. I mean, in all fairness, I haven't had a grapefruit in years. Right. So I may enjoy it more than I did, but I, it's just too bitter. It's real bitter. Um, and it's not, you know, some things are okay. Like you, you put up with the bitterness because there's a big payoff. And if you're waiting for a payoff with a grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be disappointed. You're, Yeah. It's not worth it, but people like them. <laughs> they so. do. I, uh, I don't know. I don't eat a lot of fruit, period. I not as much as apples, I should. But that's <sighs> not it. Apples, man. They, apples, I'm always afraid, like, it, it's work to eat an apple, it you is. know? I always get the skin stuck in my teeth. Right. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> This is what the people pay for. <laughs> Kanan talking about apples in his teeth. Really sorry, really sorry. <laughs> TMI, I guess. No, it's all good. <sighs> oh. <clears throat> all right, so what I just did, I just, you know, the more paint we put on there, the more vibrant the outside of this gets, of course. Um, and I'm not really using any white on this at this point uh, in this orange color. But there's another layer there. Guess what? We're going to move on. Wipe again. Um, let's do, let's, let's treat ourselves to the white edges. All right. And you know what? I'll even, we're even going to use the little brush. Oh, snap. It's Friday. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's partly intentional, though, because, like, if I were to use the fat, uh, flat brush, I would, uh, you know, I, I would wind up making this wonky. It, it even, it already looked a little bit wonky. Like, this is pointier than it should be, if hmm. you look at that over there. So, like, just to illustrate, like, it'd be like trying to make, put this around that bend. That ain't happening. Oh, I you see know? what you're saying. So let's... It's a little let's, too rigid. Yeah. Yeah. It could be done. But it wouldn't be pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, like, as painters, we get good at, like, making seems things mundane things seem way more exciting than they should be you mean like a grapefruit yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well dude like sometimes like i get excited about a fruit you know oh i it's so, totally understand and fruits are gosh i wish i wish that i could just do f the c the whole series was just fruit painting <laughs> But uh, yeah, people people want to learn how to paint other stuff. 
That's true. But I think th that fruit is like therapeutic. You know, like I, whenever I don't, whenever I have writer's block or painter's block, if you will, you know, yeah. I, I return to the fruit return. because it's always been good to me. <laughs> yep, that's watery. Okay. I know that you are in detail mode. Uh huh. But can you watch your head? Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Sometimes I get so wrapped up in it, and I don't have the smallest nose. <laughs> but like, I'll like bump my nose. You know, like, <laughs> I'll, at the end of the day, I, sometimes I won't even know that it happened, but I'll have like paint on my nose. That's so funny. I, <laughs> I have a witch nose. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. This painting's not about that, though. <laughs> this painting's about the grapefruit and learning how to paint. And my receding hairline. And your receding hairline. <laughs> Okay, so see that that would that wouldn't look that good it, had I used use the flat brush. Hmm. <laughs> I think we made the right call, Keenan. Good call. Thank you. I, I'm glad we uh, discussed it. Yes. Okay. These edges. All right. So brush question, mm -hmm. you're using a liner. Right. I am used to watching Sarah use a round. <sighs> Man. Yeah. Do you have a specific reason why you use a liner? I don't ever use round brushes. Like, and I know that's weird, but I just... I don't know that's weird. I find them to be, fr like, frustrating. And I, maybe, maybe that's why I'm terrible at watercolor, you know? Hmm. Because she does watercolor and she, you know, I'm sure that... Um, but, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't even know if I can answer your question because I, I just... I, so it's, it's mainly a personal preference. Yeah, it probably and Sarah and I and like from habits. Aesthetically, we're different, you know, too. Like she, her paintings, even formally, are about different things, and she seems pretty like cautious and stuff. And that that's in part due to the medium, right? Interesting. I'm used to because I I'm all oil and acrylic. Right. Oh, so what are you doing now? Oh, good question. Sorry. So I'm going back into the so I'm going back into these lines we made a long time ago with this tan, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of this creamy like a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, but mainly white. Um, we're just doing another pass on that. Uh, and a thicker pass. Th each one of these, in theory, the way I like to do it, is each layer I make it a little bit thicker, more globby. So, and as it starts to take shape, you can just like visibly see like I'm getting more confident with these strokes, you know? Yeah. That's why I'm telling you, general to specific, is it works for me that's the only way i know have you tried to go the other way yeah yeah um does it take longer it's not so i think that when if you are the type of person that just like just works section by section like okay i'm gonna make this perfect you know uh whatever this is tenth of a grapefruit like the, the thing that's frustrating about it to me is I don't like committing to something knowing that uh, 
something in this corner that's completely seemingly unrelated is going to uh, affect how this ends up. So I like I like to make these little tiny decisions based on what's going on. What's going thing. on over there? Yeah, makes sense. Um, Whereas if you start the painting and you put all your time, you know, all your effort into one area starting off, it's like, ah, it better be good. <laughs> you know? You trust yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like, you better know what you're doing, which I don't. <laughs> but like I said, people, I know people who work that way. Um, yeah, I have friends. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I have. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I know people. <laughs> um, but. How did you get started in painting? So, uh, I mean, I've always loved drawing. Well, I, I mean, l let me rephrase that. I loved drawing before I loved painting. Uh, as a kid, because that's kind of the first art anyone does is they draw. Yeah. You know, you're bored. I used to draw in church all the time. That's where oh, okay. I would make all my drawings uh, growing up. So when you were bored at church? When I was bored at church, <laughs> which... <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, in my case, happened sometimes. Oh, yeah, sure. I, I, I believe I, I've been in the <laughs> same boat. Yeah. All right. So, just so you know, I'm yeah, I'm still making these little delicate passes. And you, if you remember last time we did this, we were doing it with the flat brush. So now I'm doing it a little bit more carefully. A little more delicately. A little bit more delicately, and a little bit more well, thicker layer of paint too. Thicker lines, more globby. I'm a big fan of the word globby. Yeah, isn't that fun? I keep, it's kind of like pontificate in that sense. <laughs> yes, yes. Kind of. So the comic in me is like, oh man, I'm, I'm going over the light, you know? Cause like you get a light whenever you're supposed to get off the stage. Yeah. I'm just like, oh no. Nope, you're good. Okay. But your head. Right, man. Does move into the camera frame <laughs> sometimes. It's not a big yeah. deal, that's why I'm here. Right. You, yeah, don't be afraid to, which I know you won't be. No. That's why you're Keenan. That's right. <laughs> All right, so this is where, it, strap in, because this is about to get, this is going to be some high octane painting oh from here on out. Oh dear, yes. <laughs> We're going to be doing dark lines, this light is, lines. This is what I came for. Highlights. These are only a few of the things that you're about to witness. <laughs> so obviously the darkest uh, colors we can get right now. Um, and also, good time to talk about why you don't use black out of the tube. Okay. Why Unless you're, I mean, of course, like, I mean, tell me there more. are causes to use black out of the tube, especially if you're making a black and white painting or if you're making a monochrome painting, that's good. And but mon monochrome, just to be clear, is black and white. It's black and white, or it actually, it could be like brown and white, or okay. blue and white. You know, it's just, like more there's two. neutral colors. There's two colors. Two colors. Well, it's like one color and white. That's why it's mono, I think. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's good to learn, first of all, how to mix your own black, uh, uh, because black, when you mix it, it has all these other colors in it. So. Uh, in theory, if you make your black like that in your darks, whenever you pass over it with a white, you're not left with like an, uh, you know, an uninteresting gray. Or you, every pass you make has all these little pigments. And you, after you know it, like you can look at a painting and say that 
that person painted with black out of the tube, and they shouldn't have. Um, so yeah. don't paint with black out of the tube unless we tell you it's okay. Unless, we're t unless, we send it <laughs> unless to I'm you. trying to sell it to you. <laughs> Um, and that, that that applies for the way I paint only, but um, but that's that's how I learned. I didn't I didn't use a secondary color until like last year. I just was a stickler about only you know I would use different shades of of red to start, but oh. I would use uh, I would mix everything that I I made, which is why. In my old paintings, you never see any purple or anything fun. Um, but mm. also, you have to worry, whenever you use black out of the tube, you gotta be worried about, uh, you have to be worried constantly about getting it into something else because it'll muddy, make it muddy, you know, mm -hmm. and just take all the pop out of whatever it gets into. It's not good. So one thing that would be useful for mixing colors is to know your color wheel. In, yeah, that's color, that would be that color theory. Yes, absolutely. Am I the best with knowing all the stuff I was taught? No, absolutely not. So what I'm doing here. I'm going to start adding definition, and I mixed this, it's just, it, it really all it is is just the, the red and the blue uh, that we have here, and it's more blue than red, and you'll run into these dark values. Um, but I'm, I want the inside of the grapefruit to be super high contrast, and I want it to, you know, just pop. I want it to be real defined. That's, that's my favorite part of this painting when I look at it. But uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just defining the insides, these little, you know, triangle-looking things, with the darkest dark that we're gonna have on this painting, probably, probably. Um, and I'm, you know, some of these are kind of watery lines, some are not. question yes will you move your head to the right yes thank you absolutely I uh, we need to look into getting me a new head <laughs> if, if I'm gonna continue what's, doing what's this. that gonna look like right how can let's make art help you get a new head we could just we'll use one of the one of the other painters will sit here and I'll have my arms come from behind them and I'll actually be doing it. There you go. Okay. That would work. That'd be fun. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> so. Sometimes I say uh, posture, and that helps the artist. I do. It, I I knew this was gonna happen. No, I just it's right. so you're... I get in the zone. <laughs> I forget. I, I enjoy it when you get in the zone. Do your customer do do they know like where the this is located? Kind of. Kind some, of. Some people have asked. Yeah. Yeah. We've had uh, one time we did a live and we showed the back room. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's uh it's pretty uh, rough right now for sure but right yeah. what they can see looks nice right I just didn't know if they knew that we were in Missouri oh yeah I'm, I think most of them know the birthplace of civilization <laughs> Missouri. Hamilton Missouri <laughs> <laughs> okay this is, I mean, this is the part 
I mean, just doing stuff like this, it's tedious. Let's be honest. It's, oh, it's yeah. a little bit tedious. But, you know, I have Keenan. <laughs> to make it. To talk to. Oh, there you go. Nice. Painting is a lonely endeavor sometimes, if you let it be. That's interesting. That's but, an interesting perspective. Because I am not I'm not a painter. Mm -hmm. So I picture painting as a very multiple person involved thing. <laughs> Ideally, yeah. Uh, but you're also you're going to spend a lot of time just by yourself. And that's okay. I I like doing it. Yeah. But it's good to get out and get some fresh air. Yes. So you don't lose your mind. That is, that is good to do. <clears throat> okay. So we did an, uh, a pass on all those lines. Kind of redefined it a little bit. Um, just added a little bit more clarity. Um, yeah, that, the edges are popping. Yeah, almost too much, too much pop. <laughs> Go back. Uh, uh, okay. Let's go back to the table. Let's. We're getting close to like the final layer on the table, so maybe we can knock it out here. Um, nice. I'm just gonna leave that to soak in there. I'm gonna. Clean this off a little bit. Um, now on the, let's with this layer on the table, let's go ahead and we're just, we're not even, we're, like the brush is a little bit damp, but it's not, there's not r really any water, watering down this paint. Um, but it's, you know, it's white acrylic paint, so it's still going to show through. We're, st we're not going to lose everything that we have going on here. Um, but let's just see how it looks. Let's spread it around. Okay. White paint, man, that's, I, I buy it more than anything because you use white in every painting, a lot of it, or m most of the time. I need to stop saying universal statements, but like, you know, you... Generally speaking, you use a lot of white. I go through a ton of white. Interesting. It's like, and back when I was a poor uh, art student, white paint in the art department where I was at was like gold, you know? It's a coveted, precious substance. <laughs> when was art student days? <laughs> uh, so I, um, I spent five years in school and I was only an art major for like three and a half of them. Okay. So I, like, I, I went to a university where you know, where it, it was, you, even if you were an art student, you had to take regular classes gotcha. and stuff like that. And that was, uh, so I went in when I was 18 and I was 23 when I graduated, okay. I think, 22, 23, something like that. So that was, and I'm 29 now. A few years ago. A few years ago. Not bad. Yeah. Okay. So we're getting closer. Yeah, that looks great. If you say so. I do say so. <clears throat> All right. I appreciate it, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> All right. So uh, I, let's, uh, boy, the, the grapefruits, they're, the outside is looking pretty red, like maybe even redder than I would like. So 
that, that's a good next place to go. I'm gonna get, and my palette, like it starts off neat, but boy. It's exciting. Whew. So, let's get some more yellow up in here. Uh, <laughs> Let's put another layer there. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, starting to look a little bit more like the pit, the the picture. Man. Okay. Okay. And we're getting to the point, man, where it's like time to start caring about the edges, you know? Okay. Um, for, and you don't have to do it this way, but I, for this painting, I want my edges to be pretty defined. Um, so you're, it'll take some experimentation uh, to know how to achieve that, but I, uh, you know, you get to a point where I want this to be defined from the background. Uh, I don't, I don't want one to be seeping into the other. So I'll get a lot of paint and I'll just kind of, I'll really, f I, you can turn the page if you have to, rotate it. Um, is this good camera wise? Yep, okay. So we got an edge here that needs to be thick um, and well defined from the background. So I'm just, I'm going to get, I'm going to continue globbing paint on there until it is satisfactory. I'm holding it up just so I can see better. Nice. Always to helps to get those eyes away from the paper. Oh, yeah. Sometimes posture helps with that. Right. Did you just sneak in a posture? <laughs> <laughs> like, is my nose in the way again? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to bump my nose? Okay. Okay. So that's, that's looking better. It's still kind of like, I can still see like the pencil marks. Do you see those in there? I don't um, think so. Really? It, so I'm still seeing the pencil uh, under there. And that's okay. fine, you know, if that's your thing, that's fine. Um, but I would prefer not to see the pencil under there. So I'm going to I'm going to wait for this to dry out a little bit and then I'm going to return to it. <sighs> okay. All right, let's go back to the high octane details of the interior of the grapefruit face. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what to call it. Call yeah. it all of them. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's uh let's get a little white. let's let's do some pink. We already have enough red on there. Let's go back to our white pile. Okay. Let's mix a little pink. Some people who are organized as well, like, um, you know, those people, mm -hmm. like they'll, they'll use a palette knife. They won't even use the brush to mix so much. You know, they'll use a little knife and, you know, kind of mix the paint methodically and, and be organized. I think that takes the fun out of it. Um, I could agree with that. You know? Yeah. If, if it's not fun anymore, then why are we doing this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to start adding some highlights. That's a, that, that might be a little bit too much white for now, you know? I'm going to reel it back in, get some more red in there. Oop. All right. And I'm just gonna start globbing it in there, but not so much that it, you can't see the, the pure red coming through. You know, I want little sections, you'd be able to see that. 
So that red also almost ends up being a highlight by you saving it. Right. Yeah. And we're just going to make these little squiggles cuz if you look if you look at a grapefruit it's it's these little parts are squiggly. You know? Yeah, there are a lot of parts to a grapefruit. Yeah. Um, so I'll we'll just add, add these little guys. How do you decide on the posture of a fruit that you're painting? Um, I usually, you know, you strategically place them in a way that's interesting, that shows you, you know, like, it depends on what you're, you're wanting to achieve with it. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, like, with this, I wanted to show what it looks like on the inside of the grapefruit, uh, and, like, this grapefruit, I leaned up against this one because that seemed like a fairly natural way to have it kind of standing up on its side. It's leaning on the other one. Um, whereas, you know, if I put this grapefruit, if I just, if I wanted to paint the face of it uh, just looking directly over it, uh, then that would, that'd be a completely different painting about yeah. different things. Um, and it wouldn't show the form of the outside of the grapefruit, which I like too. You know? I say you know a lot. I think I think I do know. <laughs> um, let's get these little sections. Just just a little dab on each of them. Okay. So, let's do, let's go back into the shadows. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, and we'll treat ourselves to the little brush again. Uh, we're going to get some of this violet. You know what? Yeah, let's get a really dark, and you can reach, in theory, you can reach a black, you know, which isn't like a true black necessarily, but uh, you can get something that's indistinguishable from black by putting a little little yellow in there too. Really? So you put a little yellow in there, so that like makes a dark green, and then you you put the the red in, and it like the the pigments have no place to go, so that yeah becomes super dark. That's an interesting way to explain it. The yeah, that's how I think. Pigments yeah. no have yeah. no place to go. Isn't that weird? It's like That's a cool way to look at it. Yeah. It sounds a lot more... I think I stole that from someone. I feel like one of my friends described it that way, and I liked it. Yeah, that's a great way to describe it. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's put a dark line here so we can really define the edge of that grapefruit and maybe you know it would be pretty dark back here too so let's let's add some darkness and let's define this line while we're at it yeah oh boy all right we're getting closer um <clears throat> All right. You know, while we have this, this this dark going, let's go back into the the detail of the grapefruit, the fun part. Um, it's, it's just like a constant for me. You know, it's like a constant back and forth, darks and lights, mid tones. Just kind of. This is a part that I would encourage you to experiment with, too, you know? 
That I do not know. Like, do do you prefer the grapefruit to be more of a, um, or at least like the the meaty, you know, face of the grapefruit? Do you prefer it to have these details and and shiny spots, or do you prefer it to be just kind of an approximation, um, where your your brain just kind of puts in the details for you? Um, I want the ins I want there to be a lot going on inside these grape for like these little sections. So I'm gonna put a lot more squiggles, a lot more darks, and a lot more lights. Boy, I feel like Sarah would be done with like four paintings by now. <laughs> I mean, she can breeze through them pretty quick, but she doesn't mind painting for a while. Right. Okay. So. Just putting these little squiggles in on the other side too. Nice, okay. <clears throat> All right. From here on out, it's just like a matter of tweaking what we already have, right? Right. I think... Yeah. So in the original, I put a, like a little seed you know, that's supposed to be a seed right there. You see that? You wanna, there you go, a little down for that. Yeah. And I think there's a little seed over here too. If not, there's about to be. So I'll just kind of like outline. I see, okay. Yeah. Maybe it's a seed, maybe it's not, you know, yeah. <laughs> depending on you know how when you if I pull this peel off. an orange, it's got those little bumps you got to take off. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yes. I don't know if it works that way for Precisely. a sliced grapefruit, but I think it looks great. Right. Okay, one thing that I did in the original that I haven't done yet, is, and it's kind of a fun little part, uh, is there's a little bit of a shadow on the top like on the face of this grapefruit, uh, on the white part, oh. it's especially visible. And I made that pretty blatantly like light blue. And that's, that's kind of what I was talking about. Like you can get away with, what you can get away with as far as like fun colors showing up, making an appearance. So let's, let's just see what that looks like. We'll just kind of put the shadow here. Maybe even extend it, yeah, into this stuff a little bit. You see that? Totally. It's a fun little. That is a nice little detail. Yeah. It just makes it seem a little bit more convincing. Shadows are so much fun to play with because, like, when you think about it, shadows are... Um, we think of things like, like this object casts a shadow on something, but it's not that way in painting. Like painting, the shadow, how do I put this? The shadow makes the fruit, you know? It, oh, yeah. It's like opposite. Yeah. The shadow makes you see the shape of the fruit yeah. and define it. Right. It's not something that's actually being cast by something. Right. It's something you put in there to make the grapefruit make sense. Yeah. So, and people get really good at, at, uh, what's the word? Um, just faking it, you know, like if a shadow is inconvenient, uh, where it's at, you know, they can 
kind of uh, sneak it in somewhere else, so to speak. Does that yeah. make sense? All right, let's do let's do some more highlights on the meat of the grapefruit, and you'll notice I did not wash my brush off good enough. Okay. I did not notice that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so let's, uh, yeah, let's get some more pink and let's make it a wider pink, like a lighter pink, more white in it. This is the shiniest of the shiny now. And we'll do pretty thick. I've got it on my brush pretty thick right now. But I'm just kind of like, you know, adding these organic looking squiggles and they're they're an approximation it's guesswork and What are you thinking? I'm liking it. <laughs> it's funny to look from my angle over here, just uh -huh. at the paper. Right. Versus what it looks like on the top cam. And it's amazing. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm curious how this looks on camera. Because it looks... never looks exactly the same on it. No, camera, it doesn't. You know? Each project is different from the first time you do it, and it looks a little, I think the color's a little more, um, well, they're just a little different in the camera versus in real life, so. Oh, sure. Um. Yeah, I think. Looks awesome, though. Looks great. <sighs> We're getting, yeah, it's like super close, if not. Let's, uh, you can still see some pencil marks through there, which is something I intended on being gone by now. So let's see if we can cover those up and then almost done. <laughs> no worries. Let's do yellow. Oh boy. It's one of the favorite things uh, that I enjoy about my job is the different perspectives I get from each camera uh -huh. and in person. So it's really interesting for me to be able to see all of these art projects being finished or from start to finish. Right. I love it. I'm sure that would, uh, and you, yeah, you get to see a how many, how many different people do you film? Uh, you are the fourth. Fourth, okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah by, by the time this is all said and done, you're gonna have a good understanding of, <laughs> of like, I think one of the coolest ways to look at art is just like, what does it say about the artist? You know, their personality and sure, um, how they go about doing stuff. It is interesting to see. Yeah, you're right. It's interesting to see how the artist goes about similar projects, even. Yeah, with different mediums how they explain similar concepts, but with, again, a different medium. For sure. It's really interesting. I'm uh, going back into these lines with the flat brush again, just to see if I can make them pop a little bit more. Hmm. 
He's a little bit, there's one thing that's bugging me. It's just a, like a little water spot. But I think I'm gonna do that and, and then uh, and we're gonna call it a day. Okay. If that's okay with you. That's up to you. I cannot be trusted making these sorts of decisions. <laughs> How do you think I feel? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. You know what? I think I think they, you know, I think we've arrived. Nice. It's a little different. You want to compare them on yeah. the camera? Do you want me to? Right above your uh, palette. One right above the palette. One, one above the palette. So this is the one I made this morning, and this is the attempt at recreating it. Set them almost directly above your palette, and like, then shift to your right. Like that? Right there. There you go. So the one on the left is this morning? That's this morning. And the one on the right is today? Today. Awesome. Yeah. Look at the differences. That's cool. Indeed. So that, uh, that's our project for today. Uh, if you can, um, I, I would love to see what you guys do with this because there's so many different ways this could go uh, and uh, so many different ways to go about painting a grapefruit. Um, so if you can, upload the images of, of what, uh, what you're working on uh, use the hashtag let's go make art right yep, that's right um, on Instagram and so I can uh, I can check them out and um, yeah really appreciate you watching and listening and I appreciate you Keenan hey thanks Aaron yeah this has been fun yeah <laughs> okay all right